Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. That is right, it is done. As you saw in the time lapse, we managed to finish off draining the water out of the ocean monument. And I need to, to run back home and get a few things, namely a bunch more fireworks and some iron blocks, because today we are going to take down the remainder of the monument and build a guardian farm in its place. And this is going to be a little bit dangerous because, as you might expect, now that we have removed all of the water from the outside of here, the inside of this monument is going to be chock full of guardians, or at least the guardians are going to spawn anywhere they can, and that will be our next job, is to remove all of the areas where guardians can spawn, to make sure that the only places we will find them are inside some tanks we're going to build later in the episode. The area around here is still looking like a giant mess, but for now it should serve its purpose. And I've removed the conduit from up there because we're not going to be swimming around for too much longer. I think we're going to take this whole thing down layer by layer from the top. And that's why I brought all the iron blocks, because one of the ways we can do that is using a haste 2 beacon. Prismarine is pretty fast to break. Give or take the sea lanterns, you'll have a nice easy time breaking basically any variant of Prismarine, and with haste 2 it should hopefully be instant in the same way that insta mining stone is. So I'm going to remove all of the blocks from the top of this and we're going to set up two beacon bases actually right here. In fact the whole area of the top of the monument here is 10 by 10 so if I brought enough blocks with me we might go for four beacons just for fun. Because we have four beacons here in the ender chest and four stacks of iron blocks was more than enough it left us with 40 blocks of iron to spare and the cool thing about beacons is that you don't need to create a separate one for each beacon effect you want. So if we place a beacon here, then obviously it'll count all of the blocks below it as part of the standard beacon pyramid. But the same goes for if we place a beacon here, here, and here. You'll notice the secondary power for this one is active, as is the secondary power for this one, and these two as well. So if I break down one of these blocks of iron into iron ingots, we can set up, let's say, haste 2 on this one. We'll set up resistance 2 on this one. We'll have some speed and regeneration from that one. And this last one here can give us strength too. If we want to throw jump boost in there with strength selected here, we could still select jump boost one and modify that and it would give us all six beacon effects using four beacons. But in the meantime, I think we've got enough to take on all of these guardians, make sure our health regenerates, make sure we don't take too much damage from them, have a little bit of extra speed while doing it, and now we can instamine all of the prismarine blocks here in the monument. Of course, we are still going to need some sponges to dry out the interior, and I only have a few of those which are still dry, so I need to pop back through to the nether and make sure that those dry out. But I think since we have the luxury of being able to dry this out from a completely dry area around the outside, we're going to forego the nether tree method, cool though that is and just stick to sponges because to be honest these things are a bit of a pain to take down. We'll probably set up a couple of chests around the perimeter here so that we can stash all of this prismarine because waste not want not. Even though we're going to be able to farm some of this stuff afterwards I think it's going to be worth keeping hold of all of the prismarine that we can grab in the meantime and it's still worth having a few solid blocks in this case blocks of sand so that we can divide up these areas and make sure that they're easier to dry out. But a sponge or two over here, over here and here <laughs> and that whole area is pretty much done. So without further ado I'm going to brew a cup of tea and we're going to get on with taking down the rest of the monument. Hey folks, welcome back. This whole perimeter is looking a little bit cleaner now as well. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse and gosh, there have been so many time lapses in this project, but it's a big project. We've done a lot and there is still a fair amount to do, but we've got the majority of the foundations laid, or rather we are keeping the foundations that were laid by the ocean monument itself. And I just decided to swap all of the ground around here for sand just so we could get an easier look at where everything is. We might still need to make a couple of changes to the surroundings and I do still plan on decorating a little bit, but in the meantime, I thought I would give you a quick rundown of what exactly is required in a guardian farm in case you want to attempt to build one of these yourself from scratch. Because while this isn't necessarily going to be a block by block tutorial, I think that's because 
a lot of the time guardian farms are easier than you might expect. All you really need is a tank with a bunch of soul sand at the bottom of it. Then you need some sort of surrounding in the tank to make sure that the guardians cannot fall out of the site and neither can the water. But of course, once you put soul sand and water together, you start to create bubble columns and guardians are not immune to those that will push the guardians all the way up to the surface of the tank. From that point, your guardians can be pushed into a water stream that's going to take them down to a drop chute. The drop chute will drop them down into a killing area. The one thing that you need to bear in mind when you're building a guardian farm is that guardian spawns, while they do happen in large areas of water, happen much more frequently when there are blocks above the area where the guardians are spawned, where there are solid blocks preventing access to the sky. And it's not a light level thing. This is really just there so that guardians spawn more frequently inside the monument than outside, or to balance that out, because obviously there's a large area of open water around this thing. And while the game only needs two blocks of water in which to spawn guardians, obviously the interior furniture of the monument, all of the pillars and the different architecture in the rooms and stuff, is going to typically prevent the guardians from spawning too much inside. So what Mojang has done to counteract that is to make sure that guardians spawn much more frequently if there is a block above the water block in which they spawn. I've kept the bottom platform of the monument here to illustrate that this is the area in which we can build our guardian farm, but whatever we end up building here, it needs to have a roof of solid blocks over the top. A lid on the farm is going to make sure that it spawns guardians much more frequently. And if you want to try this out for yourself, you can try this out in a creative mode test world or something. Just take down all of the monument, build a massive tank of water in there. Don't put a lid on it to start with and see how many guardians it spawns. And then put a lid on it and you'll see that it spawns guardians, according to the Minecraft wiki at least, 95% less if it doesn't have that lid on. Like the, the spawns will go through the roof once you put an actual roof on the farm itself. For the next stage of this though, I am going to take down our four beacons, lovely though they have been, and we might still leave one of them here to counteract the fact that when you attack guardians, they deal thorns damage in exchange. We might have a couple of other neat ways around that as well, so we might get to that a little later, but in the meantime, the beacons are going to have to come down, and maybe we will reinstate the regen and resistance one once we have the farm up and running. The only other principle we have to keep in mind with this guardian farm is that guardians are like other hostile mobs, and they will not spawn within 23 blocks of the player. So we'll need to make sure that wherever we build the spawning tanks and wherever we end up building the killing area need to be 23 blocks apart for guardians to spawn inside the farm continuously with the player actively at the farm killing them as they arrive. And we are going to kill them as they arrive just so we can get hold of more guardian drops because while they will drop prismarine shards and prismarine crystals even if they are killed by means other than a player, killing them with looting is going to mean we get more drops out of it and it also includes a drop of fish. As long as you aren't killing them with a sword that has fire aspect you'll get a lot of raw cod dropping from guardian farms and that can be traded to fishermen villagers so it can potentially be a source of emeralds if you're still looking for one of those in your world or you want to expand your villager trading repertoire. Well that's the beacon taken down, now to plot everything out. So in the center here we're going to have a tube that leads down to an AFK location or at least a location we can stand that is far enough away from the lowest point here in the farm that will make sure stuff can spawn anywhere inside the tank that we built. And the 58 by 58 box extends up to Y61, a block below sea level. So that's the point at which we can build the topmost part of the tanks inside our farm. The water streams to redirect the guardians are going to be naturally eight blocks long. So starting from this block here, we want to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out that side, and we need to go seven out this side as well. Each of these streams is going to be two blocks wide, just so the guardians have a little bit of room to be channeled down there. And another the two block wide stream is going to feed into these from both sides. And in addition to that, we could expand it on this side so we have another eight block stream one block up that's going to feed down into that one because adjacent to that, we're going to have a long, large tank filled at the bottom with soul sand. In fact, we might as well build that now because it's going to involve removing sections of the floor. We can plot this out in eight by eight sections because each of these water streams is gonna be eight blocks long and the tank is going to be eight blocks deep because of course, we need to direct the guardians who are gonna bubble up in the bubble columns into water streams that are gonna feed across and down into this water stream here. So we can have two of these eight by eight sections here. We can also have an eight block long stream filtering down into this one directly. So guardians will just tip over the edge there and then 
then we can have another two on this side so that we fill out a little bit more of the perimeter here while not having to drown the entire thing in soul sand. Then we're going to do the same thing on that side and we're going to do exactly the same thing mirrored on the opposite side. So the farm is going to be very symmetrical but we leave ourselves plenty of room around the outside in case we want to expand it in future or in case we just want to decorate it with something. And we'll wait to put the water in until we have the kill mechanism ready because once this thing starts going it's going to produce a lot of guardians for us. Okay, so far one of our two fish tanks is done. <laughs> well, kind of done. It, there's still a couple of touches that we need to add in here, but that's why I brought you folks back in. And yes, I have done all of this with stained glass, making this whole process a lot longer for myself. But in the meantime, we can at least get started on the next phase of the process. We want to fill this whole thing up with water eventually, but before we do that, we need to put in a layer of something that's going to block the water and allow the guardians to travel up through it and then have them fall into a water stream that's going to be placed along the top here, which seems like physically it would be quite difficult, but it's actually relatively easy. There are two things we can use in order to do this, which are signs or fence gates. Open fence gates or signs placed against the block have no collision but will still block water. A lot of the time people will opt to use fence gates because they cannot be waterlogged, meaning that if you misplace any of the water at any point during this process, it's nice and easy to fix your mistakes. In this case though, I think I'm probably going to go with signs, and because this entire thing is a water-coloured monstrosity, we're going to go with warped wood for that. So we're going to make ourselves a bunch of warped wood signs using all of the wood that I managed to gather from the draining of the monument in the first place. And and if you're wondering where I got all of this glass from, I've had a stockpile of glass for a little while, but a lot of it is coming from smelting all of the sand that we brought over here to drain the monument in the first place. So this disc at the bottom here is just a fraction of the sand we ended up using, and a bunch of it is merrily smelting away back at spawn in my super smelter right now. So here's what we need to do, and here's why people tend to prefer fence gates, is that when you place a sign, you've got to hit escape to back out of the sign's interface without leaving any messages written on it. And of course, you could write messages on these if you wanted to, but we're going to have to place a lot of them. And this is going to get increasingly difficult once we get further out into open area where we won't be able to walk along a wall like this and place the signs. But if we hold shift and a right click, that's going to allow us to place a sign attached to a sign, meaning that if we remove one of these blocks at the back here, then this sign is going to break and all of the other signs in that row are going to break too because they're all attached to each other. And signs cannot exist without a block support supporting them. That block can be another sign if you want it to, but bear that in mind when you place these and make sure the blocks that you put around the perimeter here are final, because if you're attaching signs to them like this, you're going to need that block to stay there. But then of course the idea is that we're going to place a row of blocks around the back here, and any water we place against these blocks, remember not to place it against the sign itself, we are going to be placing the water against this row of blocks above that, is going to float on top of the signs like so, and that's going to transport the guardians down into the water chute that's going to transport them in towards the central area of the farm. We're also going to need to put a row of solid blocks along here to make sure that the water stays contained. We could put another row of signs here, but realistically, we're going to have a roof over the next section of the farm and over this section of the farm as well, so we might as well put something solid here. In fact, let's make that out of the same prismarine blocks that we've been using for the rest of this C-shape here. And that gives us a platform by which we can place the next row of signs and so on and so on in towards the middle of the farm. Filling out the row of water sources along the back here we have a row of perfectly even water sources stretching down towards this part which we're going to convert into a tube that will carry the guardians in towards the middle and that's where they're going to get killed. At this stage our trap is looking pretty good. It's even looking kind of stylish actually. I quite like the way this design turned out. We have our layers of signs holding up water. We have a central column into which the guardians are going to fall and adjacent to each of these areas channeling the guardians into this water stream. The water stream goes down a step every eight blocks until it reaches here and that's what channels the guardians into the center of the farm. It is going to help enormously to have roofs on the top of each of these things because once a guardian leaves water they have a tendency to hop around a little bit so we're going to limit that behavior by trying to keep the roofs two blocks high in as much of this area as possible just to make sure that they don't bounce around too much when they make their way down here. And the signs down there are going to be suspending a couple of source blocks of lava which are really just there to soften up the guardians as they fall dealing a little bit of lava damage and fire damage so that when they fall down into the killing area down there they should be nice and easy to kill with a single swing of a netherite sword. Now of course the big question of this farm is going to be how do we fill up this massive tank of soul sand so easily? Well there is actually a pretty straightforward answer to that and it's 
kelp. We tore out all of the kelp from this monument while we were drying the whole thing out, and we smelted a bunch of it in a smoker, but naturally, all around us in the ocean, we can kind of see some of it peeking over the wall there, there is kelp, and we even have a little bit left over from the smoker operation. So what we're going to do is throw a water source down there, and that's going to flow down until it reaches the bottom of the tank. Flowing water like this can still spawn guardians, but ideally we want to make sure that the bubble columns are active and that means it needs to be water source blocks all the way from the floor to the ceiling. How we accomplish that is by using kelp, and really all I need to do is break down a bunch of these bone blocks. We can bone meal the kelp so that it grows all the way up to the ceiling there, and once we remove the kelp plant, that's going to become a complete bubble column. It also makes every block in this bubble column a water source, and as we know, adjacent water sources are going to combine to form more water sources. So moving very carefully along here so we don't end up waterlogging any of the signs by mistake, we're going to place water sources flowing down from the top of the short side of the tank right here. As we grow the kelp up in bubble columns, you should see it start to fill in the water sources immediately adjacent to them. Now having collected all of our kelp from the bottom of the tank here, we're going to grow more kelp plants along one of the long sides of the tank and this is going to take a little while but of course every time we create a new kelp plant here it's going to find a diagonal water source to connect to and it's going to start producing more water sources in between them. So all we need to do is fill in two sides of the tank with full bubble columns made out of kelp and the water sources and the water physics of Minecraft will take care of the rest. Now once again keep in mind that we haven't put the roof on the tank yet so hopefully we shouldn't see too many guardian spawns. We might get the occasional one here and there because this is still a pretty large body of water but for the most part we shouldn't need to worry about guardian spawning until we put a roof on this thing and block access to the sun. Uh, yep yeah, it looks like we already do have our first guardians coming through the system here so even though the farm isn't at its most productive yet it's certainly producing a couple of guardians in the meantime and well i have had to dodge guardian attacks a couple of times but now all i should need to do is <laughs> run on down here and break all of the kelp plants which will probably be best off doing backwards just so the bubble columns forming up behind us aren't going to interfere with this in any way. But there we go, we have a full tank and oh, the kelp is leaping out of the water like flying fish and the guardians are flying out of here as well. Now it should be safe to slab off the roof of this section here just to make sure that the guardians can't escape, jump out at us and potentially laser us while the farm is in operation and while we're still working on the killing mechanism over here, but I think it's pretty safe to say that we've got a hit on our hands here. Incidentally, unlike other forms of aquatic life in Minecraft, guardians don't suffocate when they're out of water. They'll just kind of aimlessly hop around like that until you kill them or they despawn. So for the most part, we don't have all that much to worry about from the Guardians, but be aware that if any of them do escape the farm, they're not going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> One other thing to bear in mind about this farm, and it's something I haven't had to worry about for a while because it was a while since I used the Guardian farm from the last survival guide. If you have fabulous graphics switched on in here, it's going to try and render a lot of bubble columns and your frame rate is going to take a massive dip because unfortunately it is going to try and render a whole bunch of bubbles inside of there. So what I recommend doing is switching your graphics to fast or fancy and maybe even turning particles down to minimal when you're using this farm and that should limit the amount of frame rate drops you get from having this amount of bubble columns in this area. But I can already see that even without the roof on this farm, it's producing a heck of a lot of guardians already. So once we put the roof on the bubble column area of the farm, the results should be pretty spectacular. It's honestly making me second guess whether I need this second tank at all, but I kind of want it for the symmetry of the farm, and I think it's just going to improve the rates even more. For now though, we need to make sure there's an area down here where we can kill these guardians as they emerge from the farm, because right now they're just getting dumped out underneath the monument, and yeah, this is no place for them really, is it? <laughs> so to prevent them from leaping around quite as much when they come down here, we're going to set up a small pool of water basically at the bottom of here, just to make sure that they all end up in a single area, and we we're going to put some slabs here. We're going to work on how to limit guardian sight lines in just a second because right now these two in here can see me through the side and that's kind of going to be a little bit awkward if they can laser me whilst I'm trying to use the farm. But as it goes right now they are at least contained and this is the point at which I think I'm going to switch this beacon here to 
resistance and regeneration instead of haste, just so we can make the most out of this farm in the meantime and prevent the guardians from dealing too much damage to us. Now, as I mentioned before, part of this farm is going to soften up the guardians with a bit of lava, so I've been to the nearby basalt delta and we're going to pick up a lava source to put in that glass tube. We're going to place that here just above those warped signs and being warped wood, they shouldn't catch fire from lava, so those signs should be in no danger of breaking. Now when the guardians spawn inside the farm, once they come through the tube up here, they should fall down through the lava and take a couple of ticks of lava damage along with a bit of fire damage as they fall. The fire is going to be pretty much instantly extinguished by the fact that they fall into water at the bottom here, so maybe we can stick another lava source in there and see if they take a little bit more damage as they go. Here we go, this one will put one block above that and we'll make sure we box that back in nice and quickly so it doesn't end up flowing out and hurting us. And let's see if the Guardians are able to make it through two block thick lava, which I think they have done in the past, but only when they've got enough momentum from the fall. So you don't want to put this lava right at the edge of the tube. You want the Guardians to have gathered a bit of fall momentum so they'll drop through the lava instead of landing on the surface. Looks like we have a test subject on the way. Let's see what happens. Does it fall through? Just about. Yeah, okay. So as long as they all have that much momentum as they fall through, they should linger in the lava for a second or two, take a couple of ticks of damage, and once they reach the bottom here, they should be a pretty easy one or two hit kill. We might end up moving that lava pit a little further down so we can stack three lava on top of each other and see if that makes any difference. But realistically, we're going to be sweeping away at all of the guardians as they're inside the farm. They're going to be taking sweeping edge damage. And as long as we don't take too much damage from thorns, it'll be nice and easy to kill them all anyway. The other thing we could do is remove the water here to introduce an element of fall damage because once the guardians have fallen down through this lava chute, they're potentially going to be nice and soft and easy to take a little bit of fall damage. Plus, we're probably going to have to move our AFK point to about 20 blocks further down so that we are no longer within range of the bottom of the farm and we're not limiting the spawns that can happen inside this space by being too close. So this killing area down here is temporary, but of course we need to set up an area with hoppers to collect the drops and all of that other stuff besides. So I think that's going to happen once we've made a few more improvements over here. So I'll do a little bit of digging around here. We'll build our second tank and then hopefully this farm should be fully operational. Well, folks, the grind is almost complete. The wait is almost over. We are almost ready to put a lid on this and say we are done with the farm. And it still annoys me that the beacon is an odd number and it's off center. But down here, we now have an adjusted area where we are going to be killing all of these guardians. The AFK spot is at roughly, yeah, Y21. So it's close enough to 23 blocks away from most of the spawnable space inside the farm. We could lower this by a couple more blocks if we wanted to, but I genuinely don't know what's down here. And I figured at this was low enough. So we set up some hoppers next to a chest that's going to collect all of the drops for us and we'll make a more complicated collection mechanism later for all of the you know different drops to be sorted and stuff like that. But I figured now we might as well just get all of the fundamentals of the farm out of the way. And the secret ingredient in this is one that I never thought we would end up seeing in a killing mechanism for a farm, but somewhere in the depths of my memory I recall this being used to prevent Guardian's line of sight from actually reaching you and lasering you. So we're going to head back to spawn real fast and actually dig into my reserves of diamonds because the secret ingredient is, somewhat unbelievably, <laughs> enchantment tables. An enchantment table has just the right sort of height that a gap between the enchantment table and a trap door placed on the block above like so, so that it limits the player's head height, is actually enough to make sure that these guardians cannot see you. And then you only have to deal with the thorns damage the guardians will deal instead of all of the damage they can do to you by lasering you. And we're about to prove that right now by collecting the water bucket from in here and letting all of these guardians loose into my collection area, yikes. But once we've resolved that somewhat embarrassing issue, we can lay some water down here and we could have a dispenser dispense and retract this if we wanted to, but we'll find that the guardians now plop down here nice and easily and none of them should be able to laser us even if we go completely belly up to the enchantment tables here and for security's sake we could also put some uh, trapdoors right in front of the hoppers here but it makes it nice and easy to step in take a little bit of thorns damage in the process but 
There we go, all of the XP comes flooding out once we've killed a few of the Guardians, and all of their drops should end up right here in the chest nearby, so we can reclaim some of the resources. We've already got some COD coming through, as well as some Prismarine shards and crystals. But of course, this is nowhere near the rates this farm is capable of, because it is now finally time to put the roof over the top of the spawning areas, and we'll see how many Guardians start to spawn once this entire area is blocked off from the sky. Oh, and one other thing we can do to increase productivity a little bit, occasionally I've noticed that the Guardians can leap from one side to the other and land in the opposing water stream. It occasionally happens coming out of here and I've managed to block off the Guardians on this side from jumping over by placing a couple of trap doors right there. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this side. We're going to put them there and there. And now the Guardians that are coming through from each side of the farm should slide underneath these trap doors like those ones are doing. But if they try and make the leap to the water stream on the opposite side, they collide against the trap doors and they fall straight down through the lava. So that is working as intended. Now it's finally time to get a roof on this thing and then we can declare the farm officially done. Okay. Okay, at last the farm is complete, the lid is on, and now we should be able to see how productive this farm can be. The Guardians all floating to the surface, and there's a lot of them. They're coming in from both sides as well. Fantastic stuff. So those should all be making their way down to the kill area, and as we stand down here, we should now have a decent flow of Guardians popping on down here, to the point where they will probably start entity cramming down here, but we've got four spots for them to sit on, so for the most part they'll be okay. One thing I recommend actually is to install another set of trapdoors behind the player here, so that you don't end up getting knocked back so much by the Guardian's thorns damage. That regen and resistance should do a fair amount of work. Hopefully you your armor has mending so it will repair itself as it takes a little bit of damage, and we should end up with a whole bunch of drops coming through to the chest right here. So that's looking pretty good if you ask me. And we built the farm this way so that it can double as an XP farm and you can get all of the drops through looting. But of course, if you want to just have the guardians fall down here and die on campfires, then you can passively farm all of the drops you want. But I think some of this raw cod is going to come in handy trading with some fishermen and the rest of the time, all of the prismarine shards and crystals are going to be great to have on hand for crafting more prismarine blocks. But folks, that is where we're going to leave our fantastic fantastic farm for today and thank you so much for watching this episode of the minecraft survival guide my name has been pixel riffs don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you folks soon take care bye for now